speaking. So yeah, we'll start in five minutes.
<clears throat> okay, so it's time to start. So to please tell me if you can hear me and see my slide. Is is everything okay? Yes. <clears throat> Good. Uh, to, to, let's go. So today, uh, to, to we continue our discussion on open problems in uh, Manhuis geometry. And, uh, so this is uh, uh, so two two papers where you can also find some some material, some discussion on uh, open problems and trends in uh, Manhuis geometry. And uh, so uh, sometimes I will refer to uh, to, to this uh, the second. Uh, uh, paper in in this list because uh, uh, so the, this paper as I told you already contains uh, a chapter devoted to nine geometry and uh, I will refer to uh, the problems included in included in this chapter okay so what we're going to discuss today first no no first of all I I'd like to to mention three uh, topics, other topics uh, in uh, differential geometry and mathematical physics where uh, nine Hertz operators naturally appear. So the first one, uh, so we have already discussed this topic. So that's compatible Poisson uh, structures and uh, recursion operators, so this sort of thing. So let me still remind you uh, the, this notion. So it's, we consider two Poisson structures so P1 and P2, equivalently, you may say that so we consider two Poisson brackets defined on the space of smooth functions. Uh, the main uh, uh, property uh, of, of the Poisson structure is uh, that it is uh, uh, skew-symmetric, of course, and also satisfies uh, Jacobi identity. Jacobi identity is fulfilled. But uh, and we say that uh, two Poisson structures are compatible. So if uh, the sum P1 plus P2 is uh, still a Poisson structure, that still satisfies Jacobi identity. Uh, so why uh, the compatible Poisson structures are important and uh, interesting in this business uh, for the following reason. So if we uh, consider the, the vector field X, uh, so which is not just Hamiltonian with respect to one of uh, these brackets, but by Hamiltonian. So meaning that it is Hamiltonian with respect to both P1 and P2, where P1 and P2 are uh, compatible. So it means uh, that uh, so we can find two different Hamiltonians, Hamiltonian functions uh, F1 and F2, uh, such that X is uh, Hamiltonian with respect to P1 with Hamiltonian F1, and with respect to F2, uh, with respect to, sorry, P2 uh, with Hamiltonian F2. So if uh, this condition holds, we say that X is by Hamiltonian. Uh, as a rule, you, you may think of it as an experimental fact, but uh, so there are fundamental reasons for that. So as a rule, so by Hamiltonian vector fields, by Hamiltonian systems are integrable. So we can integrate them, so they uh, demonstrate uh, so regular uh, the behavior and possess uh, so many other so remar remarkable properties. And in this area, uh, nine Hertz operators naturally appear. I will explain, the, uh, I will remind you how they appear uh, in, uh, in five minutes. So here, so I, I give some, some references because uh, I'm not able to, uh, to discuss uh, this uh, the topic in detail. This is a huge area of research. Uh, so many integrable systems are known to be so by Hamiltonian. And uh, uh, so this property is considered as uh, one of main reasons for uh, the integrability. Uh, so I don't know, it's, uh, I would, I would estimate that hundreds or maybe a thousand uh, 
uh, papers devoted to this subject in the theory of integrable system, both uh, finite dimensional and uh, infinite dimensional. Okay, so that's one thing. So the other topic, uh, maybe some uh, just a few words about uh, uh, uh these uh, the, each of these papers so uh, the the first paper so this one uh, it's uh, it's about poisson nanfi structure so so in this paper you will find the explanation of, of this phenomenon how nine hills nine hills uh, operators uh, appear in uh, this business. Uh, the second uh, uh, paper is also very good because it, it explains uh, so how this by Hamiltonian property is related to separability of uh, variables and that why uh, so these uh, systems are um, uh, integrable as a rule and uh, how to integrate them. So how to find these uh, uh, nice uh, so variables in which uh, uh, these systems sort of separates uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, how uh, nine hoist operators uh, help to, to, to do this uh, separability. Uh, so the next uh, paper by Turiel, it's very, uh, the nice and non-trivial uh, paper uh, which uh, describes uh, the classifies uh, the Poisson structures uh, compatible Poisson structures P1 and P2 uh, uh, under uh, so one uh, important condition so that uh, no, at least one of these structures maybe both uh, are uh, non-degenerate and uh, therefore, instead of Poisson structures, we can uh, consider symplectic structures. No, but basically, so this is uh, the same idea. So it's a local classification of compatible non-degenerate Poisson structures at generic points. So this is uh, important. So generic points, non-singular points. And also the, the last, uh, the Gelfand Zaharevich. Uh, so it's also, uh, that's uh, it's very nice paper on local local geometry of bi-Hamiltonian structures, both in uh, uh, non-degenerate and degenerate case, because uh, sometimes uh, so if both Poisson structures, P1 and P2, are degenerate, uh, so then uh, that's uh, slightly a different subject, but uh, uh, still it's a very uh, important and uh, interesting. Okay, uh, next uh, next topic, next area. Uh, these are so-called uh, projective geometry or uh, geodesical equivalent matrix. So, so this sort of thing. What it is about? Uh, so, to, here is a definition of uh, the main object to study. So, we consider two Riemannian matrix, or maybe pseudo Riemannian. So, it, it's uh, it's okay. Uh, the, the signature uh, of the matrix so can be. And arbitrary. Okay. And uh, so we say that uh, they are pro projectively or geodesically equivalent. So this is the same. Uh, if uh, they just have the same geodesics, uh, the same geodesics consider it as uh, unparameterized curves. Uh, so the point is uh, that so, so the geodesic lines, if we know these lines, so they not. Sometimes so they allow us to reconstruct metric uniquely. Sometimes uh, it uh, it can cannot be done. Uh, so the, there are many uh, different Riemannian metrics possessing the same geodesics. Uh, yeah, and uh, so it's uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon, and uh, we would like to to describe such metrics uh, and. Uh, uh, in terms of local normal forms, for instance, or some maybe global properties, so integrability of geodesic flows. So that's a very so interesting subject. Uh, so this is, it's exceptional metric. So that's what I uh, need to, to explain. Uh, exceptional situation when it, it happens. Good. Uh, so what uh, so what we know about uh, 
and uh, about them. Uh, so there, there is a very, very nice uh, theorem, very old theorem by Dini. It's uh, 19th century, end of 19th century. And the Dini uh, explained uh, so how these two metrics look like in dimension two. And the statement uh, of uh, his uh, theorem so is as follows. So it's if you take uh, two uh, geodesically equivalent metrics, uh, so G1 and G2 in dimension two, then uh, you can always find uh, the coordinate system such that uh, uh, the, the the first matrix so takes so this form so it's uh, this is so called Liouville metric and uh, if you have a metric written in this way it's called Liouville metric uh, and so this is G one and G two and G two is related to G one in this way as as it as it's shown uh, there is a third one more. Uh, theorems much stronger and uh, basically so that was uh, uh, the the main result in the area for many years uh, uh theorem so which uh, it, it is uh, uh, that statement is uh, a little bit more complicated so for this reason i don't want to write down explicit formulas here, but it's it basically the same. Uh, if we assume that so we're given two um, Riemannian metrics, the, the G1 and G2, which are uh, geodesically equivalent, uh, so if they are Riemannian, uh, the, the arbitrary dimension here, so not necessarily two, uh, and we consider generic point. Uh, so generic point uh, so means uh, uh, that uh, mm, no, basically it means the following. So it's if you consider uh, a self-adjoint operator. Uh, like G1, G2 inverse. So we assume that uh, the, this operator, the eigenvalues of this operator, uh, so to have locally, so they have constant multiplicities. So that is uh, genericity uh, in the same, uh, the same meaning as uh, for the, uh, and operators. And in this case, uh, Levi Civita uh, found uh, canonical forms for both G1 and G2. Uh, maybe uh, uh, like, uh, it's, it's, it's a very nice topic and maybe I'd like to, to, give, uh, to give you one example uh, in order for you to kind of to appreciate and to see so how this, uh, the, the, this may happen, uh, two different metrics, so having the same geodesic. So to, let, let, let me try to, to draw a picture for you. I hope you see that's my my drawing here. Okay, so the, 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 let's do the following. So I consider a sphere. Let's take not sphere but half. So this is half sphere. Oops. Um, uh, and so this is the center of my sphere. And what I what I want to do, I I, I want to consider the projection from uh, this sphere to the plane. Uh, the projection from this point, so so-called central projection. So I take a point and I project it down to uh, this uh, plane, so like this. So this is P and this is uh, the F of P. That's a Q. Uh, okay, so the, what the, so what I want to say? I want to say the following. So let, let us consider, let us consider uh, uh, geodesics on the sphere. So the geodesic on the sphere. So do you know the the answer. So these are uh, not just uh, so big circles on the sphere. So it's, if I do this projection and project uh, this geodesic to uh, up. To, to the plane, uh, so they will obviously I will get a straight line, and uh, so therefore, uh, so what is it, what is the conclusion? So the, the conclusion is uh, as follows: so on uh, on this plane, so it's if I consider not just if I 
uh, uh, identify this uh, uh, plane with uh, the half of the sphere by, by means of, of this map. So this is a diffeomorphism. So then the, the, so the, what I can do, I can define uh, uh, on the plane the metric uh, from the sphere. So, the, so on, on this plane, I have a so it's metric uh, from the sphere. Uh, so which uh, has obviously constant uh, curvature, constant uh, positive curvature, positive curvature. Uh, in, the, in this model, uh, on the plane, uh, all geodesics are just uh, straight lines here for this metric, so it, so it follows immediately from this uh, the picture. But on the other hand, on the plane, uh, there is just a flat metric, flat metric uh, on, uh, on this plane, on R2, uh, so it, whose geodesics are that also just a straight lines. And uh, therefore, so what, what does it mean? It means so that so now on the plane, I have two different metrics, metrics so, so G1, so this one, and uh, obtained from the sphere, and uh, G2, not as standard flat metrics on R2. They have the same geodesics, and uh, these are uh, just the straight lines. Uh, the parameterization uh, on uh, those geodesics are different, of course, uh, because uh, the arc lengths uh, in in the sense of uh, the sphere and the arc lens uh, in, in the sense of the flat metric, though they are different. Uh, okay, so this is just example uh, uh, demonstrating that uh, uh, this uh, situation is, uh, is quite uh, possible. You can do something similar, not only for the sphere, but also for the, uh, uh, ellipsoid, for instance, uh, the ellipsoid also admits uh, um, uh, so as a matrix, so having the same geodesic. Geodesics. Okay, uh, the, uh, so here uh, I give you some 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 references uh, uh, again, uh, and uh, so I I want I wanna. Yeah, I, I, I will tell you some, some remarks about this. So this Levi Civita the paper, so you see it's a very old paper. Uh, so this paper so provides canonical forms for uh, geodesically equivalent metrics uh, of uh, which are positive definite. So positive definite matrix. And, uh, the second paper, uh, uh, so you see that I refer to here to the papers uh, written by uh, by us, so so, so to people so who, <laughs> who is involved in the nine hertz geometry business now. No, for not for the reason that uh, uh, so these uh, papers are uh, the most important in this area. No, not at all. So this is just this. I refer to them because so this paper reflect uh, our point of view, which is closely related to the nine Hertz geometry. And for instance, in, in this paper, uh, so we explain how this uh, nine Hertz geometry, nine Hertz uh, operator, uh, operators uh, appear in this uh, area and this business. Uh, the, the second paper, is also it's it's very important because uh, so here uh, uh, Matveyev uh, studied uh, uh, singular points. So you see, so here so we assume that point is generic. Uh, so Matveyev focused on the singular points where the eigenvalues of uh, related uh, nine separators collide. So that's, uh, that is an important point. And uh, uh, finally, this one, uh, this paper, why uh, I'd like to mention it, because so this is basically uh, an analog of the Levi-Civita theorem, but uh, in the case when 
uh, the metrics are not uh, necessarily positive definitely and uh, uh, it appears that in, in this case uh, the answer is sort of is not so kind of transparent and uh, the, it, it, uh, the the formulas look uh, quite uh, complicated and uh, so it, so you see it, it took more than 100 years to to generalize uh, this uh, so positive definite case to the case of uh, arbitrary signature. And why? Uh, because uh, so we use some sort of new techniques, uh, new techniques based on nine Hertz geometry, in fact. So this is, uh, that's a, that, that the main point for us, I suppose, uh, first the studying nine Hertz geometry associated to, to, to this business, okay? And uh, so one more uh, area of research uh, in uh, mathematical physics. And in, in fact, uh, uh, here I am not able to tell you uh, too much about this, not just uh, so briefly, I want to mention some ideas. And the first point I, I want to point out that uh, Hamiltonian systems, so they are considered both in finite dimensional situation and infinite dimensional situation, not only ODs, but also so PDs. So, so integrability of PDs and Hamiltonian property for PDs, uh, that's it's, it's very uh, so well um, studied and popular topic in mathematical physics, uh, 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 but uh, I, I'm not going to discuss it uh, in, in any details, no, just an example. So you see, if we uh, if we consider a system of PDs of uh, this kind, so that's this, this very simple. You see, uh, it, it is sort of almost linear, it's quasi-linear here. It's linear so with respect to derivatives. Uh, and uh, here this A of U, so this is an, an operator, uh, operator uh, defined to manifold M uh, with, with, with U being the local coordinates. Uh, uh, for uh, this sort of system, so we, we can also, so we can define the notion of to, to being Hamiltonian. And uh, again, that without explaining why, I just uh, state uh, so, so one result. So, so uh, let, let us assume that so we have uh, the flat metric G. So G is a flat metric. And uh, so we have a uh, uh, function H defined on our manifold M. Then so we will do the same. So we, we will construct an operator AIJ, which is, uh, so nothing else, but actually it's what is called uh, the Hessian. Hessian of, uh, of this function H with respect to the, the levitch vita connection nabla uh, related to, to this flat matrix. Uh, so if uh, the, this operator so A of U uh, is defined by means of this formula here, so then the, the, this system of quasi-linear the, the equations uh, is Hamiltonian, and for this reason, so it, uh, uh, so this system uh, uh, satisfies uh, the, many important properties, uh, and uh, and it becomes uh, especially interesting. So, if uh, this system not just Hamiltonian, but by Hamiltonian, but by Hamiltonian with respect to with respect to what? It means that uh, you, you can uh, uh, write this operator A of U in two different ways. So you, you can derive it in this form, but uh, with respect to two different flat metrics, G1 and G2. Uh, in, in this business, uh, so we, we can simply say that, so given a flat metric, so this flat metric defines a Poisson structure, Poisson structure of a hydrodynamic type. And uh, so that's what, uh, so what we see here. It's uh, some sort of, uh, in, in this area, it is called Hamiltonian operator, operator which does the following. So given a function H, this function H, it's not Hamiltonian 
functions. It should be understood, in fact, as, uh, um, as density. Uh, density of a certain function, also this functional defined is defined on the, the space of uh, uh, functions so u of x. Uh, so these functions are considered as uh, the set of these functions considered as a loop space for the, this manifold M. No, it, it's uh, it's a bit kind of uh, complicated, but uh, what is important for, for us to understand? So it's the following. So, so we take a metric G, a flat metric, that's metric number one. And uh, so we take metric G2, also flat metric, metric number two. And uh, so we, uh, the, the both uh, define some sort of Poisson structure. It's called Poisson structure of hydrodynamic type. Uh, and also, so we need compatibility. Compatibility in the sense that, uh, so if I consider uh, uh, two uh, operators of this kind, then we consider some of these operators. So some, some is still satisfying, so it's still satisfies Jacobi identity. <laughs> Um, and uh, and so it corresponds to certain flat metric again. It, it it's not the same as to say that the sum of these two metrics G one and G two is still flat. Uh, it, but it's almost true. So, but what you need to do, you need instead of these matrices, uh, instead of matrix G one and G two, you need to consider the, the inverse object, so with upper indices. And then so G, I, J with upper indices like here. So then the compatibility, uh, so basically means uh, that uh, for this contravariant matrix, so the sum of two flat matrix is still flat. So this is the main property basically. Uh, so the references. Um, uh, the, the first uh, paper by uh, the Franco Magri, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, very famous uh, paper. To, that's one of uh, milestones in this business. And uh, first of all, it explains uh, in what sense uh, we, uh, so that we can treat uh, uh, evolutionary equations, not of this kind more uh, general, uh, how can we treat them as Hamiltonian systems and actually even by Hamiltonian. So it's kind of by Hamiltonian idea in uh, in this business for uh, system of PDs. Uh, so Dubrovin Novikov, uh, so they, they introduced and studied uh, 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 Poisson brackets of hydrodynamic type. So that's what I'm talking about. And the last uh, paper I mentioned uh, by Ferrapontov. Uh, uh, so this is a series of compatible Poisson brackets of this type. Uh, so these are just uh, the, the, the first three slides were uh, just to, to mention three, uh, uh, three uh, areas. Uh, of research in geometry and mathematical physics, uh, it's where uh, nine Hertz operators uh, uh, naturally appear, uh, compatible Poisson structures in finite dimensional case, uh, geodesically equivalent metrics, and uh, the Poisson structures of hydrodynamic type, uh, this is infinite dimensional Poisson structures. Now, uh, so how uh, nine Hewitt operators appear in uh, these areas? In very natural way. So, so if we have uh, two uh, finite dimensional compatible Poisson structures, P1 and P2, then so what we can do, so this we can think of them uh, just two skew-symmetric matrices. Uh, let's consider an operator who, uh, whose matrix is defined just in this way, in, by means of this formula. Then if P1 and P2 are both Poisson, uh, and uh, so they are compatible, then the separator L is 9 Hertz. And uh, you remember, so we discussed this already, uh, this operator uh, is called a recursion operator. Uh, and uh, uh, 
eigenvalues of this uh, operator, or uh, better to say, the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of L. Uh, so these are first integrals for any bihamiltonian system. Uh, these uh, integrals commute, and so and so on and so forth. So this is a very important and the key ingredient uh, of, of this theory recursion operator for geodesically equivalent matrix for geodesically equivalent matrix so the situation is is very similar so you take two forms so g1 and g2 you 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 may think of them uh, as uh, matrices symmetric matrices and you basically do the same you consider an operator so with matrix so, so g1 inverse uh, G2 inverse G1, uh, but here in this case you need to uh, to to do some sort of rescaling, uh, and after this rescaling, so if you add uh, this factor here, so this operator L uh, turns out to be Nyhurst operator. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, uh, that, that's. Uh, uh, the another uh, the in interesting fact, uh, which is not so so difficult uh, to check. Uh, next, and now we consider two compatible Poisson brackets of hydrodynamic type. Uh, it means uh, that uh, so we have two uh, compatible flat uh, matrix G one and G two. Uh, compatibility of the corresponding Poisson brackets uh, will imply uh, that uh, the separators so G1 inverse G2 inverse G1 uh, without any factor uh, is is a non-hue separator. So non-hue uh, the operators so they appear very naturally here, and so they uh, what they do they uh, uh, in in all cases, uh, they appear as uh, as kind of link uh, between two uh, compatible or two equivalent uh, objects. Uh, so what what, uh, what next? Uh, uh, what we can do? So look uh, in if you look at these formulas, uh, you you can easily see that uh, for instance this P two. Uh, the, the second uh, Poisson bracket can be easily expressed in terms of L and P1. So the same here. So G2 so can be expressed in terms of G1 and L. Here's the same. Uh, I, so we have three objects. Uh, to two objects from from this series and uh, the link uh, this operator L between them. But in all cases, uh, so that we can replace uh, this triple by a pair. Uh, so one uh, ingredient of this pair so will be, you know, for instance, Poisson structure, or metric, or flat metric here, and uh, so the other, oops, so the other ingredient will be. Uh, the, the 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 corresponding nine first operator. So it, it, it's just uh, the formulation. So it, we will say that the L nine first operator is compatible with Poisson structure P if P and L P. So this is P two uh, are compatible. The L is geodesically equivalent to the metric G if G two defined from G and L in this way. So this this uh, the formula which does this uh, the work. So if uh, these two metrics are geodesically equivalent uh, and the uh, same here. So L is Poisson compatible with flat metric G. Uh, if uh, this metric uh, G2, so this G2 here, uh, computed uh, from G and L is flat, and uh, and together with uh, so G, they they form uh, uh, they define compatible Poisson brackets of hydrodynamic type. So this is nothing uh, nothing deep, so just reformulation. But uh, this reformulation uh, turns out to be uh, it's very helpful. It, it instead of P one P two, G one G two, it is uh, so much uh, more convenient for many reasons. Not always, but sometimes to to consider to replace this pair 
by the different pairs, so P and del or G and del. Okay, so uh, and in this uh, sense, uh, I uh, uh, what I'm doing. So I kind of I consider this P or this G or this G as a partner of uh, our uh, Nanhuis uh, operator. So these are partners of L. In, in in the sense of this definition. So now uh, that's uh, that's uh, that was kind of long uh, the introduction. Now we are ready to uh, to state some some open questions. And the, the, these questions, oops, that are, that are very natural. In fact, oh, wait a second. Okay, uh, uh, it's about. Uh, uh, the partners. So uh, we, we can ask uh, this question in the following way. Uh, take an uh, arbitrary Nanhuis operator L. Uh, does it admit any partner, a compatible Poisson structure, or geodesically compatible matrix, or Poisson compatible flat matrix? Can we find a partner for it uh, or uh, not? Uh, the question, uh, this question can be discussed both in global and local context. Uh, so you, you take uh, just uh, L defined on the closed manifold and you ask this question, or uh, you take uh, L uh, defined in just a small neighborhood. Uh, yeah. So that, that that's a very uh, reasonable uh, uh, question here. Uh, so what uh, what uh, what do we know about this? Uh, first of all, uh, if uh, uh, if we consider this question locally, so take uh, nine choice operator L, uh, and uh, assume that. Uh, uh, in the neighborhood, uh, so we, we consider uh, the, the algebraic type of L so does not change, it meaning that meaning that uh, all the eigenvalues have constant multiplicities and the structure of Jordan blocks is uh, is the same. Uh, so then, uh, in uh, in the first two situations when we were talking about uh, compatible Poisson structures. Poisson Nanhuis structures or geodesically compatible third matrix. So the answer is essentially known. We know which uh, uh, algebraically generic operators uh, admit uh, partners. Uh, this result is uh, due to two real for. Uh, in, uh, compatible Poisson structures and uh, and us, me and uh, Vladimir Matveev for uh, geodesically compatible metrics. There are some restrictions. Not uh, every operator uh, is, uh, is suitable in this case. Uh, for uh, uh, Poisson uh, compatibility with a flat matrix is, as far as I know, the, the answer is still needs to be clarified. Uh, it, it is uh, uh, clear what happens when L is diagonalizable, but uh, for the Jordan blocks uh, or Jordan blocks with complex eigenvalues, at the time, no, I'm not sure. It seems to me that uh, still, so there are some, some issues to, uh, to, to to clarify. Uh, no, but uh, still, the, the essentially, uh, in local context, uh, the situation with uh, algebraically generic points where the algebraic type is stable, doesn't change, uh, uh, the situation is sort of more or less clear. So this question about uh, partners is basically related to singularities, to singular points. So it's, we consider an operator, an operator L in the neighborhood of a singular point uh, where some, 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 some kind of bifurcation of algebraic type uh, uh, happens. Now, for instance, uh, some eigenvalues collide uh, or maybe some, 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 uh, some bifurcation of Jordan blocks uh, so happens, so this sort of thing. 
so then uh, for singular points uh, the the uh, uh, this uh, problem is uh, i would say is totally open no however so the so we still know something about uh, some types of singular points. Now, for instance, uh, maybe you remember what we discussed uh, uh, a week ago uh, when uh, we were talking about uh, Poisson and Huy structures. Uh, so what, uh, so what we did, we showed that uh, in, in this uh, area, the singularities uh, which are differentially non-degenerate, they uh, may appear. And uh, and moreover, so for uh, such singularities, uh, we can find uh, it's a reasonable uh, local normal forms. Uh, so for the differentially non-degenerate situation, uh, the, the partners, uh, they... Uh, uh, they, they they do exist for compatible Poisson structure or geodesically compatible matrix and also for Poisson compatible matrix. So, so that so we, we, we can always do that for differentially non-degenerate case. Uh, this, uh, the, the, this is not kind of obvious uh, and uh, uh, it required some work, but uh, so it, it will done it. Uh, however, so if we relax uh, this uh, condition and, for instance, replace uh, differential non-degeneracy by uh, GL regularity, then the, the the question is is totally open. So we we don't know which. Uh, singularities are allowed and uh, which are not. And but if you consider uh, if you uh, just uh, ignore any conditions and uh, take uh, just arbitrary operator L with, uh, for instance, singular point of uh, the scalar type, uh, then it is uh, it's not clear at all what happens, which singularities are allowed and which are not. Uh, uh, so one more remark uh, for uh, geodesically compatible the pairs L and G. Uh, all admissible singularities uh, are known. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, was a nice paper by Vladimir Matveyev uh, where he described that all uh, possibilities. So all the, the all types of singularities, uh, so we we do understand them. Do it, but uh, the, what is important in this case, uh, so, that, so this condition here, positive definiteness. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the the operator L is diagonalizable at, uh, at all points, both uh, singular and al algebraically generic, and. Uh, it appears uh, that uh, everything sort of can be uh, sorted out, but uh, this is uh, not uh, uh, trivial at all. So uh, I, I simply want to say that uh, uh, some some work in uh, this direction has been already done, but uh, uh, the the complete answer is absolutely unknown. So we only know some examples. Uh, okay, next topic. Uh, next uh, topic uh, uh, where uh, there are a lot of open problems. So these, uh, that's uh, uh, Nanheus pencils, pencils of Nanheus operators. Let me remind you that uh, uh, <laughs> that pre in uh, in my previous slide, I discussed uh, partners for Nanheus operators, that partners of different kind. That was either Poisson structure or geodesical equivalent metric or flat metric. So that's kind of partner. That it's a, it, that was a different species. But now uh, uh, the partner. In, in kind of proper sense. Uh, two nine-hertz uh, operators are compatible 
if uh, or partners to each other, uh, if uh, their sum is uh, is again in non closed operators. So this uh, the uh, this uh, object, uh, this situation has been already discussed uh, in uh, our course. Uh, uh, so it, if we have uh, two non closed operators which are compatible, so what we can do, we can consider all. Uh, the, the sum is still the non Hughes operator, but it follows immediately from this that any linear combination with constant coefficient is still non Hughes. Uh, and, and, and therefore, so we, we, we can construct two dimensional vector space generated by L1 and L2, and this vector space will consist of non Hughes operators. So if we have not two, but for, for instance, three, uh, nine choice operators compatible to, to each other, otherwise compatible. So then, uh, uh, so we can construct uh, nine choice pencil, uh, nine choice pencil, so generated uh, by uh, all of them. So it, it will be so three dimensional. Uh, and in general, the nine choice uh, the pencil or pencil of nine choice operators. Uh, so it's uh, just a vector space in in the space of all operators on our manifolds, uh, so which consists of nine Hughes operators. So this is that's very strong condition, in fact, strong condition. Uh, what what about examples? So, uh, before discussing examples. Uh, 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 I, I want to state uh, you know, general problems or general questions. So what we want? No, we want, well, now at the moment, uh, so we, we do understand that uh, the Nainhuis pencils, so they are important and uh, they will play the uh, essential role in uh in in application so that's no doubt but uh, at the moment we only have few examples uh, and we do not quite understand so how uh, how this works what uh, and who is uh, the pencils are how to construct them both locally and globally uh, so the, the the general problem is just to to find examples and if possible to to classify uh, and who is pencils so certain type uh, maybe first at generic points uh, uh, later on maybe or singular singularities also and uh, of course uh, it makes sense to introduce uh, notion to study maximal uh, and his pencil so those which uh, they cannot be extended you know, for instance you you have uh, you have uh, just to let me remind you an example to which uh, was already discussed at uh, the course. So take um, uh, diagonal diagonal manifest operator L uh, with the components x1, x2, and so on, xm. Uh, and consider the, the square, the L square of it. So of course, L and L square are compatible. And they form a two dimensional man uh, pencil. Uh, is this pencil maximal or not? No, it's not maximal. But uh, the, so the only operator you can add uh, to this two dimensional uh, pencil to, uh, to keep this compatibility and this property of being nine hertz. Uh, so this is only a diagonal operator. Diagonal operator <clears throat> whose uh, diagonal components uh, are like this F1 of X1, F2 of X2, and so on, say Fm of Xn, nothing else. So, uh, the, you, what you can do, you can uh, construct uh, this uh, so called diagonal pencil. Diagonal pencil of nine here operators. Great. Uh, so, now the, the question. Uh, okay, but uh, this diagonal pencil so can be extended uh, any further or not? No, of course not. No, not just because uh, uh, every 
operator which is compatible with both with L and del square, so is diagonal. So this is an example of a maximal pencil. Uh, the obviously, so there are uh, many other uh, maximal man phase pencils, but uh, what they are, we we do not know. But there are some, some examples, so uh, the diagonal pencil, so this pencil is known to be maximal. Um, uh, so this uh, this pencil, I, I, I have already mentioned the, I don't remember what was the context, but uh, uh, this is uh, the Ah, yeah, that's uh, that was uh, an, an open problem so discussed uh, on Monday. So let's consider this operator, uh, that which is uh, in local coordinates. Uh, it is quadratic, non-homogeneous. Uh, so there are so many parameters here: a i j, some some constant, uh, so can be arbitrary. But this matrix is symmetric. Uh, so b i and this a. So there. Is a fine dimension, but this is a finite dimensional, uh, and it is maximal. It is maximal. So the, this uh, the the second example. It's just uh, um, it's a small modification of, of the previous ones. Not essential. The matrix C K I here must be symmetric. However, uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the, what uh, so what we want uh, we want to first of all to find and study examples. Uh, the, more specifically, uh, uh, take uh, an operator L. Uh, so which is uh, yeah which is uh, diagonal and uh, construct uh, maximal pencil different from the diagonal one uh, which contains uh, this l uh, so what, what is the point so the point is uh, so if you ask the question what are uh, operators nine hues operators compatible to l so you will see that uh, uh, so there are many, uh, not uh, necessarily diagonal. So take uh, the one which is not diagonal and uh, uh, you, you will get uh, two dimensional pencil, try to extend it further. What you can see, what kind of examples uh, you, you can produce, They're not clear. Uh, uh, it's even not quite clear mm -hmm. what uh, are the operators uh, compatible with the diagonal one? How to describe all of them? Uh, so these operators are defined uh, by two conditions. So the first condition is sort of compatibility, so meaning that uh, the Nanhuis bracket, Froelicher Nanhuis bracket of uh, this diagonal operator and the given one is zero. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it is not so difficult to uh, resolve uh, this uh, uh, this relation and describe uh, all of such operators, but there is one more condition. This operator itself must be non-hues, and this uh, condition is not linear, and uh, and, uh, and still so it kind of in in this uh, in uh, this uh, setting. Which, uh, which not which operators should be which nine hues operators are compatible with diagonal one that, that, that it needs to be done also so if we consider all operators of the of the forms of this form just scalar operators uh, what are nine hues operators compatible with um, scalar operators it's sort of again it's not quite uh, clear. Possibly this uh, this is a very simple uh, problem, but uh, who knows? We we didn't try to, to answer this question. So uh, you 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 can easily continue sort of this list of problems because uh, uh, almost nothing is known at the moment. Uh, now. Uh, so if you uh, look back uh, to my previous uh, slide, uh, so you will see that uh, 
uh, there are maximal pencils which are infinite dimensional and uh, there are maximal pencil which are finite dimensional but uh, the question is what is what is what is the minimal dimension for maximal pencil uh, maybe it is three why, why i say three uh, because uh, because of the following so take l uh, the construct uh, a non-trivial example of an increase operator compatible to l uh, so then, so, no, for instance, L square, you, you can always do it, right? And uh, 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 and you can always add the identity operator, because identity operator is compatible to everything. So that you, you have L, something compatible to L, and identity. So the, the, the three... Uh, the, um, uh, three-dimensional pencil you can construct in, in any case. Uh, uh, may it happen that uh, you cannot extend it uh, further? Uh, I, I think so, but uh, um, it would be nice to, to have an explicit example of such situation. <laughs> No, it's another question. So it's it, it just uh, it's a, it's a curious. Uh, of course, uh, so if you take uh, an operator L, uh, which can be reduced to a constant uh, form, so uh, this L is nine hertz, and uh, you you can easily find uh, partners uh, for it. Not just take any operator which uh, has constant coefficients in the same coordinate system. Uh, uh, I, and and may, may it happen that uh, the situation is not as just said, but uh, the more interesting. So you take a pencil uh, such that each operator in this pencil uh, so can be reduced to a constant form, but in different coordinate systems. So that uh, all together uh, they, uh, they uh, admit uh, uh, no uh coordinate systems uh, in in which all of them simultaneously uh, are reduced to the constant form so it's a simultaneous uh, reduction is is impossible but uh, individually you you can do it is it is such situation possible or not next um, uh, this has uh, some Something related to the shift of argument method uh, known, well known in the theory of integrable Hamiltonian systems uh, on Lie algebras. Uh, and in this context, it is, uh, it's not, uh, it's not Lie uh, uh, algebras, but it's left symmetric algebras. Okay, so the, let's consider the nine Hewitt operator. So whose components are all linear uh, in uh, in local coordinates? So x1, xn, so these are Cartesian coordinates on certain affine space, and uh, that we consider L of this kind. So then it's, it's easy to see that so if I replace each variable x, uh, j by constant a, j, a, j is constant. So then so that I will get the constant operator, which is, uh, which is compatible to L. So these two operators, L and L, a are compatible. Uh, and moreover, so it's if I consider all, all possible uh, 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 I should think of them as vectors A, uh, all of them. So all possibilities for A, J. So then so that I can construct many different uh, L, A with the different uh, vectors A small. Uh, then so that I, uh, they still, uh, they are all compatible all together and, uh, and I will have this uh, L and all possible L A for all possible A, so they form a pencil. This pencil, is it maximal or not? This nine phase pencil is maximal or not? Uh, there the, is some 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 another version of uh, of this question here. Uh, 
it's a shift of argument version two. Uh, let us consider the so-called Frobenius Lie algebra. Frobenius Lie algebra, so this is a Lie algebra with structure constant C i j k. So this C i j k in uh, in the previous question C i j k. So uh, these are uh, structure constants of of left symmetric Lie algebra. So now so the C i j k. Uh, uh, these are structure constants of Lie algebra. So Frobenius means uh, that uh, this matrix C i j k x k is uh, uh, is uh, this matrix uh, is invertible for generic x. It is invertible. So then uh, it is known that so it, if we consider operators of the form, so this is, a, it, so this is, this is basically what we've just discussed. Ax, so this Ax, uh, this is a Poisson tensor. Uh, if I uh, replace X by A, I will get constant Poisson tensor. So, so if I consider now, uh, so there is uh, this product, so that it's sort of a recursion operator, uh, which uh, which is, which has to be nine hertz. But let's consider all these operators. So it's an all uh, I mean that a uh, this parameter a uh, varies, and a can be just any element from R m. So they form a pencil. Uh, again, so the same question. So what can we say about maximality of this pencil? Uh, so what uh, what I mentioned here, so these are basically all the examples of uh, nine Hirsch pencils I, I, I know, uh, but I do not quite understand if they hit uh, their maximal or not maximal. So how how this uh, maximality property, how, how it is related to uh, the, the, the properties of uh, this left symmetric algebra or this Frobenius Lie algebra, not not clear. Okay, uh, nine case uh, cohomologies. Uh, so that's uh, in, another that's a big uh, topic. Uh, so let me first remind you that how we define this uh, cohomologies. Uh, on, the, on the complex of uh, exterior differential forms, uh, together with uh, the standard exterior uh, derivative, exterior differentiation operator D, so that we can define the operator DL, or it, uh, also you can think of it as kind of uh, the derivative, but not uh, with respect to vector fields, but uh, vector field, but uh, with respect to an operator. Uh, you, 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 that was done uh, lectures say, eighteen and nineteen. That's it. Basically, so this operator is defined. Uh, 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 you, you need basically to define it uh, for functions. For functions, so it's, it's easy. You just uh, differentiate this function and uh, apply uh, the, the dual of uh, my operator L. And also, you need to define this operator on so one form, simple one form of this kind. So this so this definition is also is very. Natural, you just uh, that uh, basically uh, so that what is written here. So that it's uh, it's more or less the same as to say that uh, uh, D and DL uh, satisfy the condition DDL plus DLD equals uh, zero, something like this. So so the, you 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 have this operator, and uh, if L is nine Hertz, you can define this formula for any operator. But then it's not uh, so interesting. But uh, if it is nine Hertz, uh, then uh, the uh, the square of this operator is zero, and uh, so therefore, so you can naturally define homology groups uh, for uh, this uh, the complex uh, complex of differential forms. So what what about these homologies? Again, so we mm, we. 
don't know much. Some examples also have been demonstrated uh, at, uh, at lectures, no, but still, so there are uh, uh, the, the many natural problems to, to discuss. Um, uh, uh, of course, uh, it's uh, interesting to that what, what have been done at lectures, uh, some, some computations uh, as were done for the diagonal operators and differential and non-degenerate operators. And what about singular points? If we consider a singular point, uh, so how uh, these uh, uh, cohomologies behave and what are they responsible for? Mm, uh, no, for instance, so this is the simplest uh, possibility. So consider uh, two by two case, so two dimensional case, and assume that uh, this, uh, this operator L X Y uh, so it has just linear com components in X and Y. It, in, other, in other words, so the L uh, represents a two-dimensional the left symmetric uh, algebra. So what, uh, so what can we say about uh, uh, cohomologies? How do they depend on, uh, on, on the properties of this left symmetric algebra? So, so, so it needs to be clarified. Uh, what about uh, global examples? So, so we have some, some few examples uh, uh, of uh, an operators defined uh, so globally on uh, on closed uh, to manifold so some of them are related to geodesic equivalent matrix uh, or so there are operators we discussed uh, uh, at lectures so operators on two-dimensional surfaces or you take a complex manifold and consider complex structures. So what in this case, what what can we say about uh, Nankyo's cohomologies? Uh, so what they are, what uh, are they responsible for? So, no, it's, it's uh, still needs to be clarified. And there's one more uh, problem which uh, the, the has been already uh, um, discussed uh, at uh, lectures uh, so a week ago and uh, two weeks ago, actually. Uh, it's uh, the following. So it's, we have, as, as we, uh, as we uh, uh, just discussed, that we have two different operators, D, the standard one, uh, and uh, DL, uh, operator, uh, related uh, to given nine Hertz operator L. So take a differential form and assume that uh, this form is uh, is closed with respect to both uh, uh, D and DL. So then, uh, uh, so the, we want to prove that uh, there, there exists a form uh, uh, of, of degree smaller, so it's, uh, not k, not degree k, but uh, degree k minus two. So the, there exists a form so such that omega uh, is equal, so it's, uh, it's a double uh, derivative of A with respect to D and with respect to DL. So like this, uh, uh, is it true or not? Uh, or, or, so that it's some sort of Poincare lemma in in, uh, in uh, this case. Uh, so we believe that uh, this should be true for GL regular operators. Uh, this is true for uh, uh, this is true for two forms. So the, if omega is a two form, so then so we know that uh, this is true and uh, that that uh, was uh, used uh, uh, in our discussion about uh, Poisson nine hertz uh, structures, uh, some some singular uh, points, differentially non-degenerate singular points. We use this fact. 
for two forms where k equals uh, two uh, and uh, and that was uh, the proved uh, at lectures two year, two 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 weeks ago uh, but in uh, general setting where k is arbitrary it is uh, not uh, clear at all why uh, this should be true but uh, so to we believe it is so that's uh, 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 also, it's, it, it needs to be done to to be clarified. So, uh, okay. Uh, so, what uh, what else? Uh, what else that I'd like to uh, to mention? So, there, there is a, a kind of uh, the series of questions which uh, uh, we consider as uh, <laughs> some kind of. Name here is a zoo, is some some kind of zoology, where we kind of we do not want to maybe to to study uh, some, some some properties and prove some theorems. So we just uh, want to collect uh, uh, co collect facts, some so collect examples, uh, samples of uh, name here is a versus kind of species. Uh, so it's some sort of like I don't know zoology or botanics. Anyway, so what do we want? Uh, examples of non-Hess operators with polynomial components, of course, different from diagonal ones. Uh, polynomial components, let's say quadratic or cubic. Yeah, so this sort of uh, this sort of thing. Uh, so the way the, the one uh, examples uh, uh, global examples of non Hirsch operators on uh, on closed manifolds, some some interesting manifolds. Uh, uh, for, for example, you take a Lie group, or do you take a Lie group or homogeneous space? Uh, so what kind of uh, non Hirsch operators you can construct on them, or three dimensional manifolds so, uh, with different geometries? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned already, so, so it also it would be nice to see different types of compatible Poisson uh, of non Hirsch uh, operators. And then a lot of questions related to to left symmetric algebra. So I even don't know. So to, we don't want to uh, to discuss uh, all of them. So it's in, it's in detail. So it's a huge area. There's just a whole class of uh, algebras, and you, you you can develop representation theory possibly or something similar to that uh, or deformation theory uh, no but for us in the context of uh, the nine Hewitt geometry uh, so there are two basic questions now first of all classification not just uh, we we even in dimension three we don't know the the list of all possibilities it, it would be great to to get one so we only know the answer in dimension two. And also for uh, each uh, left symmetric algebra, so we want to understand if uh, this algebra is non-degenerate or not. Non-degeneracy, I, I repeat, uh, means uh, the following. So assume that you consider an inverse separator uh, uh, so whose linearization uh, coincides with a given left symmetric algebra. Is it true that uh, uh, this operator uh, is uh, linearizable or not? So if yes, it means that so it, you consider this operator to be this linear part plus uh, quadratic part, cubic part, so, so and so on, so higher order terms. Uh, Non-degeneracy means uh, that the all higher order terms so, so can be uh, killed, can be just uh, so cancelled out by uh, appropriate change of uh, change of uh, variables. Uh, so next question here: so nine Hirsch operators related uh, to how they are 
related uh, to singularities of Hamiltonian systems associated with them. Uh, so to what it is about. So this is, uh, that, that's uh, the, the following thing. Uh, is, uh, as uh, we explained, uh, Hoyce operators as recursion operators. Uh, they naturally appear in the theory of bi-Hamiltonian systems. So if you have a bi-Hamiltonian system, so what kind of singularities you are talking about? It's absolutely different singularities. Uh, they, they uh, uh, at uh, the first glance, glance uh, they are not uh, related uh, to singularities of uh, non hoist operators, but they do. It's what the, uh, let me clarify what I mean. Uh, if you have an integrable system, so then so what we usually do, so then we fix uh, values of first integrals, uh, so we obtain uh, an invariant uh, submanifold, uh, and uh, if uh, this submanifold is compact and non-singular, so this is a torus. Uh, so-called uh, Liouville torus so, you know, with uh, very nice uh, and simple dynamics on it. So uh, globally on our manifold, so we obtain uh, uh, so what is called uh, the Lagrangian vibration, vibration in two tori. But of course, uh, this vibration is singular. So sometimes so this, uh, this tori by four K, for instance, you have uh, one sort of big torus and it splits into two smaller torus, or so you have a torus of dimension n and uh, it uh, shrinks to a torus of smaller dimension and then disappears. So no, some sort of uh, metamorphosis uh, in, uh, in the sense of uh, this vibration. So then uh, that, that's, uh, that, uh, these are singularities I'm talking about. For bi-Hamiltonian system, so these uh, singularities, so they, uh, they, they, they have to be related uh, to the singularities of, uh, of the corresponding recursion operators, but it is not yet uh, clear how, how are they related uh, to, to each other. Uh, uh, topology of manifolds admitting geodesical equivalent matrix. Uh, this, uh, this question, so which closed manifold admit geodesical equivalent matrix? So this question is, is basically, uh, the, the answer is, it's not published, uh, but basically, it is more or less clear what happens in the in the case of uh, uh, so positive definite matrix, Riemannian matrix. Uh, no, why? No, because in this case, uh, so when uh, we know singularities of the corresponding uh, Manchus uh, operators, and uh, since uh, uh, we know sort of the structure of these operators and their singularities on our manifold, so that we can say something about topology. And topology turns out to be quite uh, simple. It's basically, so this is a product of spheres and tori, uh, maybe with some quotient with respect to a finite group, something like this. Uh, but uh, so what happens uh, in the uh, pseudo remaining case? Uh, the question is totally open, and, uh, and what is the reason? So the reason is that so we do not understand the singularities, singularities of uh, of the corresponding nine Hertz operators involved in this business. And for this reason, it's hard to say something uh, uh, about topology of these manifolds. That would be great to, to be able to, okay, to find uh, so this relation between uh, singularities of nine Hertz operators involved and topology of manifolds. And, uh, uh, finally get uh, the topological description of these manifolds. But at the moment, uh, it's widely open as we, we do not, we don't, don't know how to do it. Uh, 
So uh, and the next question here uh, is related to uh, systems of hydrodynamic type of this sort of system what we have already mentioned today. Uh, this operator A, uh, A of U, uh, if it is nine highs, so then mm, sort of we know how to integrate this system. But if it is not quite uh, uh, nine hertz, but is related to a certain nine hertz operator um, uh, by, by means of let's say so this is sort of function of certain nine hertz operator or better to say so this is a polynomial of a certain uh, nine hertz operator, so but coefficients of these polynomials are not constant, but uh, some some uh, functions functions uh, uh, in coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of this operator. So, uh, in other words, a of u can be written in terms of uh, nine hertz operators in and its. Uh, uh, its invariance. Uh, so there are many examples of, of this kind, uh, systems of this kind, and uh, some of them are very important. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, so it, uh, there is a, a new approach. There, there is a very old problem. Uh, the, it's a classical question in, uh, in the theory of integrable geodesic flows. Uh, with uh, perhaps with the, it's uh, one of the simplest situation where the problem is absolutely open for many years. So take a torus, two dimensional torus. And uh, so what you wanna do, you wanna describe uh, geodesic flows on the torus, uh, which are so integrable. Uh, integrable, uh, which admit uh, integrals polynomial in momenta. So this is a very, uh, natural uh, assumption. Uh, so what can you say about uh, 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 this polynomial? Can this polynomial be of degree three, four, five, and higher? So the conjecture is uh, no. This uh, this polynomial so has to be either linear or quadratic, and therefore, uh, so we basically know all examples. Uh, so in other words, you may say it in this way. Uh, so the, there are. Uh, there is a list of examples of integrable geodesic flows on the torus, and uh, the, the the problem is to you know, to prove that this list is complete uh, in the class of uh, polynomially integrable geodesic uh, flows. Uh, the the question, as was shown by Himironov and Bialy, is that the question is reduced to uh, studying the solutions of uh, uh, a very specific system of hydrodynamic type, so this sort of system, where A of U uh, is related to certain nine hertz operator in it's not very complicated way. And the problem is to check uh, the whether or not uh, this system admits periodic solutions. So that's, that's uh, as simple as that. The, the, to summarize, uh, the, there is a uh, there is a system of equations of PDEs of this kind uh, with operator A of U directly related to a certain nine hertz operator, and uh, so we need to to, uh, to to actually to prove that uh, this system admits no periodic solutions. Okay. Uh, so it, uh, the, apparently. Uh, to, to answer this question, so if we just need to uh, to to use uh, some some facts from the uh, geometry, like uh, for instance uh, uh, the the fact that the nine geometry, for instance, we know that uh, uh, then it's nine hertz operator that may not have a. Uh, non-constant complex eigenvalues. Uh, is it still true for uh, in, in this uh, little bit more general 
uh, case. That, that would be already nice to, to see. Not this sort of thing. So the studying properties of uh, uh, the systems of hydrodynamic type directly related to specific nine Harris operators. Okay, so what uh, so what is the time? So let me see how much time do we have? Uh, Oh no! So it's uh, so we we are about to finish. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, so the, I had uh, uh, I I have no more slides, but uh, <laughs> I have some uh, more uh, open questions uh, to discuss. But maybe uh, so we we will do it if uh, some of you uh, that are interested in this topic uh, then. Uh, so we, you can contact us uh, so personally, and uh, we uh, they will continue discussion. So I finish with the, the list of uh, 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 papers devoted to the nine Harris geometry. So you see, so there are uh, three papers: nine Harris one, nine Harris geometry one, nine Harris geometry two, nine Harris geometry three. Uh, related to the uh, theory, uh, theory of uh, uh, the Menhus manifolds, Menhus um, uh, operators, and uh, the two more papers uh, related to applications of Menhus geometry. And so it's still so that we continue working uh, in both directions, so constructing, so developing general theory and uh, looking for applications and some some other papers, hopefully, so it will uh, appear soon. And uh, this, uh, there is uh, open problem paper I mentioned already uh, with the section devoted to to Manhus geometry. Uh, so you see again, so I need to to say something. So I don't want to say that uh, mm. uh, the so these papers are the only the possible so sources of knowledge mm. of mm. Manhus geometry. No, 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 not at all. Uh, no, but uh, so this. Uh, uh, these papers uh, they uh, represent our viewpoint on uh, this uh, subject. Uh, you you can uh, it also if you if you want to study uh, this theory, of course it makes sense to uh, to look at the original papers by uh, Manhuis, uh, Hantius, uh, 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 the Look at uh, uh, speaking of applications, uh, uh, there are fundamental works by Franco Magri, Yvette Koshman Schwarzbach, uh, 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 Jennifer Pontov, and uh, Oleg Mohov on uh, uh, applications of, or uh, let's say, um, explain how nine Hertz operators are involved in the theory of system of hydrodynamic types, so this sort of thing. Uh, the, there are uh, the many the, the interesting papers on the, on the, this subject. Uh, no, but, but however, so if you uh, uh, if uh, you you you, you want a kind of systematic uh, approach to uh, uh, to this subject closely related to the content of uh, this course, then uh, uh, the, this list of papers is uh, the, the most uh, suitable in, 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 in my opinion. Okay, no, no basically, uh, so now it, it remains uh, uh, to thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, thank you very much. That, that was a very interesting experience for us to give uh, uh, this uh, online course. Um, uh, so we, so if you, if you want to uh, to continue discussion, or if you if you have it, any questions, or I don't know, maybe for some students. Uh, Maybe you need some sort of assessment. Uh, uh, then to, to just contact us, and uh, to, to, to we will uh, discuss this uh, uh, 
uh, personally with everyone so who needs uh, our help or advice. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, so any questions? I'm sorry, uh, I have uh, one question, uh, mm. not uh, directly related uh, with the elections, but uh, I was uh, 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 on the lecture of Matveev, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he says that uh, 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 that uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry. You say uh, in Russian or you don't know it, then I will translate. Uh, I try. Okay, <laughs> try. okay, that's for you. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, you wanted to. Uh, 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 he told about ways of uh, investigation nine nine first geometry, and uh, he told that uh, it may be uh, uh, con considered as algebraic uh, uh, object. Uh, which emerged in Nainhoi's geometry, uh, Frobenius algebras. Mm -hmm. Is yes. there Frobenius algebras, uh, Frobenius Lie algebras, or Frobenius algebras, or uh, no, I, I, I think I think that he meant uh, Frobenius algebras. It's different from uh, Frobenius Lie algebras I mentioned today. So there are two yes, different. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is interesting for me uh, more than Frobenius Lie algebra. What you can say about this, uh, or may can give me some references? No, not yet, not yet. Uh, so the, we're still continue Good. working on this paper. That's going to be a uh, sort of applications of nine first geometry three. It's still oh. under uh, under uh, uh, under preparation. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, no, but uh, so to hopefully it, uh, it will appear uh, in uh, maybe in a couple of months. So not, not, not now. Yeah, that's uh, that, uh, there are still something to, 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 to finish and to complete. We, uh, but on the other hand, so if you, uh, if you just uh, the, the want to to read about this, so, so our kind of uh, uh, our thoughts and our vision and, uh, and blah blah blah, and uh, you will have to wait. So if you have a specific question, so the, then then the just uh, ask us, and uh, we'll be happy to answer if we know the answer. Okay, uh, okay. I think I I just wait. Papers. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good. Uh, any other questions? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I have a small question about uh, 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 does the non host geometry, can we build uh, the uh, relation between the non host geometry and uh, the vector fields about the normal form? Yeah. Uh, as I know that, for example, the symplectic geometry, we can uh, we, we know that the, vector, the, the functions is easier in some sense than the vector fields, and the vector fields is in some sense easier than the tensors for the normal form, right? Say say it again, so that I may I do not uh, don't do not quite understand uh, the, your yeah, terminology. Uh, so what is easier? Yeah. Uh, I mean the vector fields, uh, the normal form for a vector field is well known and uh, it is uh, easier. So. For symplectic geometry, uh, we can uh, build up a, a relation between the geometry object, like the symplectic form, and the Hamiltonian vector field. 
so I would like to know if we can build up a, a relation between nine hertz geometry and uh, some vector field. I, 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 excuse me, I, I, I do not understand what, what kind of, say, say again, what kind of relation do you mean? I mean that, for example. Yeah, I just uh, I, 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 I understand the, almost everything you say, but you know, some, some, you know, just uh, uh, there's some, some words I, I can I cannot recognize. Sorry. For, for example, uh, vector field, which preserves. What is what is what, uh, what is? Could you repeat once again, sir? Uh, okay. Uh, for example, uh, vector field, which preserve ah, uh, field, nine yeah. geometry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they built this is a relation, right? So then we can uh, norm uh, normalize a vector field. If we can normalize a vector field, and this vector field preserves the non-Hurst geometry, the uh, non uh, this this operator. But the, uh, you, my my opinion that you you have to be kind of careful when trying to um, uh, to to discuss uh, this sort of uh, uh, analogy with symplectic geometry and uh, maybe other geometry. So the point is uh, that uh, so the, let let let's consider three types of geometry: symplectic geometry. Uh, Remaining geometry and uh, uh, nine hertz geometry. In symplectic geometry, uh, vector fields uh, which preserve symplectic structure, there are right. a lot of them. So any Hamiltonian vector field preserves uh, symplectic structure. So this is the group of automorphism, let's say, is infinite dimensional in symplectic case. Uh, in the remaining case, uh, so these vector fields, uh, which preserves the uh, Riemannian matrix, they are known as killing vector fields. Uh, the, or, so these are generators of the isometry group. And, but in this case, isometry group, uh, uh, in many examples, it exists, but uh, it is uh, finite dimensional. And so what happens uh, in nine Hertz geometry? In nine Hertz geometry, for generic uh, non-Hurst structure. Uh, so there are no vector fields which preserve it. So this kind of the group of automorphisms is trivial. So that so oh, the, it oh. is very, so this geometry is very rigid. And uh, oh. this might be the reason why uh, it is uh, essentially different. Okay, yeah, thank you, you very mean? much. Yeah, 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 yeah this, yeah. Uh, I, you told me that uh, it is quite rigid, so it may be. Yeah, it is. 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 No, then, uh, uh, thank you to, once again for your attention. Uh, for, if you need anything to discuss, uh, no, just uh, send us a message by email. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you for interesting lectures. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Very much. Much.